Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Today we've got a Briar Commoner deck tech for you. This is for Commoner Blitz. We're going to talk about Briar. I did build this whole deck in foil, but then I decided that I wanted to give um, Tabletop Simulator a, a shout at trying to set up some of this um, deck techs. I think it's going to be better for you. It's going to be easier for me. I think it'll be um, a, a good way to do it, and hopefully we can do some more of these. I am loving the Commoner format. I think that uh, for me, this is uh, it's a special it's a special format for me and I really like it uh, so I'm really excited about it so I haven't seen a ton of deck techs and stuff like that so I'm trying to do some more of that stuff for people I know a lot of people in the discord server are interested in playing in the commoner events that we do so uh, this is a briar build this is I'm gonna call this like briar super cheerios it's like a terrible somebody said uh, I think it was um, uh, shout out to uh, Bonehead Barrier, Corey, uh, said that it sounds like a terrible superhero name. And so this is like a Briar Super Cheerio commoner. There is only, uh, if, if you take a look at the FabDB list I'll put in the comment section, uh, this one has... Um, almost all the cards 32 cards that are zero cost and eight cards that are one cost that's what we're dealing with here we'll go through that now uh and 30 of the cards are one pitch and uh 10 of the cards are yellow uh for two pitch so the car the deck is very very aggressive and your ultimate goal here in this briar commoner is just to out aggro 100 percent out aggro you're going to be doing a little bit of blocking probably i played this against dash a couple times last night uh and even against dash i had to do some blocking but uh the embodiment of earth tokens definitely help with that so let's get into it real quick let's uh talk about briar and her ability and how this is going to affect things of course briar whenever you attack um it, with a combat a damage sorry an attack action card and it deals damage you create an embodiment of earth token so um you know this can be really really you can really do a lot of things we're going to be attacking with two or three um attacks each turn and then also have the ability to potentially use our rosetta thorn um depending on how much we had to block so Briar is going to create these embodiment of earth tokens, which then, of course, if you don't know what embodiment of earth token, it will pump your defense. So you'll be able to use less cards on defense. You'll be able to essentially block the big attack that your opponent will put towards you as much as possible, um, but then take some of the smaller damage because your uh, non-attack actions will get plus one. Now, there isn't a ton of non-attack actions in this deck. There are only, you'll see 14 non-attack actions in the deck um and we'll get into those in a minute so this is not going to be a heavy embodiment of lightning deck you're not going to get this embodiment of lightning out as much as um you may see in some other builds of um of briar but really what we're going for here is lots of attack actions and then threatening potentially hitting the rosetta thorn this is like a backup plan honestly uh it's really great if we can get to it uh but this is not necessarily the ultimate goal of the deck the ultimate goal of the deck is just to push in as much damage as possible so let's talk about our equipment real quick uh things that are really good mark of lightning is super powerful because it just allows us if one of our lightning attacks does get through it allows or if it doesn't get through and they block with a card for him and that's why it didn't get through it allows us to um instigate that damage uh and a lot of ball lightnings will you'll, you'll see ball lightning will uh really affect that as uh it will actually be able to deal the two damage then um and then, of course, Snapdragon Scalers, the best common card in the game. Uh, Snapdragon Scalers is going to allow us to cheat one of our turns, basically, and get go again and, and threaten more damage and try to gain that kind of combat advantage or initiative. Um, and then, of course, Crown of Dichotomy. Uh, this will allow us to kind of put some cards back into our deck. It also has that rune, rune blood uh, arcane barrier, uh, so that's kind of nice. A uh, nice backup. It's a, an equipment slot that allows us to um, potentially utilize arcane barrier if we get into a, a situation where we need that. It also here is just to recycle some of our threats and get some cards back into our deck. And then either Iron Weave. This is a super underrated card. Um, man, you get to destroy this if you've played an attack action card and a non-attack action card uh, to, to generate two resources. This is going to be used primarily to utilize Rosetta Thorn. Now, keep in mind, nothing in this deck costs two. So all the things that cost one, um, you'll be able to basically utilize this card on your turn to uh, do one of the things that cost one and then threaten Rosetta Thorn, which is kind of the point of Aether Iron Wreath. Okay, let's talk about 
about some of the cards. Oh, let's talk about Rosetta Thorn. Obviously, Rosetta Thorn, one of the goals, I really think it's a secondary goal, honestly, but as you play testing, you may change it up and this may become your primary goal. Uh, is to get to Rosetta Thorn, which will threaten two arcane and two physical damage for only one attack if we've played a non-attack action and an attack action. All right, that's the general feel of it. Let's take a look at some of the cards. So we have um, a total of, uh, let's see, a total of 26 attack actions here. And I've put them into two different categories. One category is um, attack actions that are going to threaten additional damage. Uh, the other category is attack actions that have free go again. Uh, and then the third one is attack actions that have optional or uh, kind of bonus go again. Okay. So let's take a look at these cards. So uh, these are the ones that um, probably your turn, what you're going to look like, it's actually going to be flipped here. You're going to use the ones that kind of have, it's going to kind of more go like this. I'm sorry. I should have set this up better. Um, you're going to be doing like a free kind of go again. So you've got uh, ball lightning. And of course we were running... Uh, let's see the best way to do this would be to draw them right uh, so for ball lightning uh, we are going to do the red ball lightning we got two of the red ball lightnings in the stack and what that does is it allows us to uh, threaten more damage it's a, a a free go again sorry not free but it is it has free go again it's a zero cost it's going to threaten three damage and if it hits it's going to deal an additional damage and again with ball lightning if your opponent blocks from a with a card from hand uh you can actually hit this mark of lightning uh that will cause the card to deal one damage which will then deal another damage uh because of uh, mark of, or because of ball lightning's effect so we have ball lightning. we have uh red and yellow ball lightning in this deck so uh those are four cards that you know are going to guarantee you another action point so the, the idea here uh on these cards is you're going to put one of these in and then you're going to probably put one of your optional uh, uh go agains and then you're going to finalize it with one of these cards that doesn't is not going to get go again unless you cheat it in snapdragon scalers uh, so ball lightning is kind of the key card that you want to see. The other key free go again card um, is going to be ravenous rabble and ravenous rabble is so good because in this deck um, really nothing pitches for three. So almost every time this deck, this card is going to be coming in for four. Uh, maybe for three. So when you play this uh, you look at the top card of your deck and it's the pitch value. This is always going to be at least a three in this deck with go again. So it's a three free cost uh, with go again. The only downside to this is it only blocks um, two, but the, this card is phenomenal in the deck. And then of course, then we also added the yellow. Most times this will be swinging for three, occasionally it would only be swinging for two but it's still very very good so you know your first card that you want to play on the turn these are cards you're not going to want to block with these are definitely cards you're going to want to save uh you're going to throw out one of these kind of go again for free all right then what you're going to want to do is hit one of these optional go agains and we have um 12 of these optional go again cards one of them uh, is scar for scar and many times you're going to choose to go second in this game so you can be slightly less um light and you can hit the scar for scar and this is another card that can definitely help you kind of gain back that initiative it's also a card that can be you know if you need to it, utilize snapdragon scalers to get go again you can do that um, so scar for scar again really really good uh swinging in for four that we're running two of those in the deck uh, let's see. The other things are putting things in um, the arsenal. So lightning surge. We have four lightning surges. You may occasionally be able to pop a card into your arsenal uh, and set up a bigger turn, giving it go again, a four cost for go again, or four attack for go again, a free spell. We also have two of the yellow ones in this deck that would deal three damage. So this is kind of your optional go again. You're putting it in the arsenal. You can always just attack with the ball lightning and then attack with lightning surge and that that could be your turn uh even if this doesn't have go again it's still good and you could always throw in other things and twine lightning uh you're gonna see uh, not much ability to fuse you're, it, it's not gonna very much happen super often you're gonna kind of need to hit the ball lightning in your hand uh, which you probably already uh you know you, you'd probably play this and then threaten the ball lightning um then sorry you fuse it with the ball lightning and then you play it and then you still have go again so it, it can work there's not a ton of lightning cards though 
Uh, it also works with Electrify. I guess there's a, a decent amount. I, I wouldn't necessarily guarantee this one as going off, but it is an ability for that. Again, zero cost for four damage. Then you have Overlord, o Overload. This is a card that you're gonna throw in kind of at the end of a combat chain to see if you can get a bonus action or not. Um, if you can pump this with some of the other cards like Nimbleism, uh, that's gonna help a lot to get that kind of dominated hit. Uh, and that's kind of why Nimbleism is in there. Uh, you're going to run two of these. And then because Nimbleism is in there, we get to run the Nimble Strike, right? So uh, as an additional cost to play Nimble Strike, you're going to banish Nimbleism from your graveyard. If you do, Nimble Strike gets plus one and go again. I've only ran, put two of these in the deck because this can be an issue. Um, if you don't have a Nimbleism in your graveyard, you can't really play this. So it can be a dead card, but because um, the only things that we really need to pitch for is Rosetta Thorn, you can always figure out how to use this to activate Rosetta Thorn. So it's not really a dead card. There is other options there. All right, so that's our attack actions. Now let's take a look. Um, oh, those are the, the optional go again attack actions. Now we have these kind of you're going to finalize your turn with either playing one of these six cards or your Rosetta Thorn here. So uh, uh, Arcanic Crackle, zero cost, is going to deal one arcane damage. Really, really good. Um, I thought about putting in um, some other cards, but zero cost is just the, the way to go here. So zero cost, it's threatening four damage. One of it's arcane, it's just creating more issues for your opponents. Two of those are kind of crack shockwave. You're probably not going to fuse this, but it's still dealing four damage. Um, again, you may be able to get a fuse off on it, but really it, it doesn't matter. You're still threatening four damage for zero uh, and then a bonus damage if you can. So two of those and then singing steel blade. Um, now this one does cost one, but it is that guaranteed arcane damage. So I think there's still enough cards um, to, you can have a couple of one cost effects. Uh, what did I say there was? I think a total of, uh, eight cards that cost one. So, um, and there's 10 cards that pitch for two. So I think you could pull this off, still be able to play one of these and Rosetta Thorn. All right, let's take a look at our non-attack actions. Again, this is a very attack action heavy deck. Um, but let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the non-attack actions. Really, there's only, uh, th there's really only six, I think, five or six different ones. We've got Nimbleism. We're running red and yellow, two of each on the Nimbleisms. Again, we talked about this. Uh, every card in the deck is going to be, a, be able to be affected by Nimbleism, uh, and it's going to give it plus three. It's going to trigger your ability to play this play a, a card and then play Rosetta Thorn. Uh, it, it's a really great card in this deck. Um, Bramble Spark, another really great card. We're going to run both the red and yellow versions of Bramble Spark. Uh, really, you're never going to fuse this with Earth. That is not going to happen in the deck. You don't even worry about that. All this is is a free way to play a uh, attack, a non-attack action, which is um, really hard to find in commons for zero cost. And uh, when you attack with this, you're going to deal. One, when you attack with your next attack action, it's going to threaten a bonus damage, um, which is super nice. But also, it's just he really here to set up Rosetta Thorn. That's the that's the big side of this. Really, is to set up Rosetta Thorn. Also, potential cards to block with with Embodiment of Earth. Uh, trying to get. I think this deck gets better if we get any more zero cost um, like non-attack actions. I think this deck will get a lot better. Uh, and then lastly, I threw in Whisper of Oracle. You could throw a yellow one in if you wanted, uh, but the ability to opt and build your turn, you know, you almost your entire next turn seems pretty good. It also blocks for three, which is important in this deck. And uh, it allows you to, again, trigger offers at a thorn. Now, this is um, the last kind of section here is one cost non-attack actions. Uh, and we're running Electrify in red and come to fight in red and uh, these are the ones that are throwing the game plan off slightly um because you're going to need to pitch for two in order to play this and play rosetta thorn and so this is where it gets a little bit less efficient but there's only four of these in the deck uh there's two electrify reds uh so that you're going to be trying to arsenal this which is super good uh, and you're threatening three additional damage this card's really really strong if you can get it in your arsenal the issue with this deck is it is sometimes difficult to get things into your arsenal uh, and then come to fight Again, it can get better than this if we get any non-attack action costs that cost zero. Uh, this one costs one. You can hardly see it there. 
Um, but what's really nice about this is it does block for three uh, as opposed to Electrify is only blocking for two. And this allows you to kind of have a big block with your with your embodiment of Earth. So uh, again, your main goal here is not going to be to block a lot. You may use one card from your hand to block unless you're up against Dash and like a more aggro um, deck that's going on. But for the most part, you're going to just be rushing your opponent. For the most part, you're going to be just trying to attack with two or three and then your Rosetta Thorn um, as much as you can, trying to get everything out. You're going to utilize your equipment as early as possible in the game. You're utilizing your equipment to uh, have a big turn and kind of take that priority or initiative uh, from your opponent. So let me know what you think about Commoner uh, Briar. I'm really stoked about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. This is the deck I'm going to play in our Commoner Armory event. There's a couple of other builds going around that are less Cheerios than this, but uh, I really like the idea of a Cheerios build. It kind of seems stupid and fun to me. Um, so uh, this is what I'll be playing. You may see this on the on the channel here in a couple of days next week when we do our uh, Commoner Blitz Armory event. And uh, we'll evaluate it and we'll keep working on it. I will leave a link to the, the deck list in the comment section. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to the people around you and we will see you next video.